Hello, welcome to McCann 2040 Solar Mechanics. I am Globus from Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. I am year three now. So I've already uh, took this course one year ago. So I try to make those videos so, uh, such that our future students can learn from peers, from, from senior students. Actually, uh, apart from this video, there exist uh, course videos for other for other common major courses such as McCann two two one zero the fluid mechanics. Uh, it is made by my peer, my friend Jimmy Lee, and also there is uh, McCann twenty four ten engineering materials made by three of my friends. So uh, I am. I am very. Uh, it is my pleasure that I can work with them on those videos. So I hope you enjoy it. So uh, before we really start, let's do some introduction. So one reminder I wish to say is that our videos are not the substitution of regular teaching activities. So uh, the main concern of us is that uh, the syllabus of uh, offered by your professor this year may change from our offering. So because we took the course one year ago, so what we've learned may be different from what your prof your professor is willing to teach you. Therefore, I wish to emphasize that there could have some difference between the syllabus and the, the instructor of your course may have already been at something so you have to bear in mind with that you have you it is your own responsibility to observe the uh, any change occurred in the syllabus between our syllabus and your syllabus okay another thing is that um Another thing is that uh, some content from your course material, for example, as I just mentioned, uh, there may the instructor may add something into the course. Therefore, those stuff are not covered in our tutorial video. So you are required to observe those uh, difference and uh, beware with, beware of it. And we so as the video make video maker i just try to cover everything everything that we have learned before also uh this is the first time we try to make video uh for the junior year students uh from from uh, as a senior senior year student so we are just year three and uh, you are year two and uh, we do this because we hope to transfer our knowledge by another mean. That is, uh, traditionally, uh, in the university, we transfer the knowledge from professor to students. However, sometimes, uh, I think, personally, I think for students, we can do a bit more to our junior year students, our experience are often important. Uh, for example, the teaching style of specific professor, uh, what is expected in the course. So, so, so sometimes I will introduce something like that to you. Of course, uh, we wish to sustain this, sustain this culture like uh, senior year students can make the video for junior year students uh, for a long time. So, therefore, uh, in the future, after you complete this course, in case you can get A minus or above, you can uh, you can apply or you just find me to join our team. I will assess your English proficiency as well as the uh, your understanding to the course. Uh, in case you are very good at it, you are very English proficient, then I may want you to to speak or reproduce the new videos for the future students. Oops, let me turn to the next page. 
So let me introduce a little bit about this course. So it is a continuation of McCann 2020 Statics and Dynamics. Uh, however, for McCann 2020, uh, only statics is significant in our course. Uh, as the solid mechanics engineer, uh, as we are inter interested to the solid under external load, so we do not deal with dynamics. Uh, so what what is what actually this course is interested in? Uh, so let me give you an example. For example, in McCann 2020, when you are studying about a beam which is clamped at the side and uh, you know that there is an external load then you may want to ask what is the load distribution the shear stress distribution in this beam mm, the shear stress may be like this okay or the moment distribution. Uh, moment is about uh, should be something like this, right? But you might want to ask why? Why are we interested to it? Why are we interested to the distribution of uh, shear force inside the beam as well as the moment inside the beam? It is because uh, under the ideal situation, we are going to deal with the deformation of the material. For example, uh, for this beam, when there is an external load P, it will not still keep strict. Instead, it will deform a little bit. So you can see there will there will be deformation here. So we are interested to we are interested to the um, function of the deformation curve, like what will be the shape of the deformation. So uh, this is why we are interested to the shear force distribution, moment distribution. We are going to study material properties or 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 talking about the topic of this, or the title of this course, solid. The property of solid. What will solid react when there is an external load acting on it? So it will be discussed in the later stage of this course. So before we really go into the solid mechanics part, uh, for this video, I'm going to give you some basic idea about uh, how how difficult the math covered in this course would be, as well as give you some uh, introduction and the revision of the moment of inertia concept. So I believe, <coughs> so, excuse me. <coughs> so I believe uh, most of you have learned general physics. And uh, in that course, it introduced mass moment of inertia. So what is mass moment of inertia? For example, you have a piece of object uh, with the geometric center located here. And you have a differential mass, dm, located at the distance r from the geometric center. Then. The moment of inertia generated by an axis by an axis passing through the geometric center. The axis is perpendicular to this plane, okay? Perpendicular to this plane. Uh, assume it is a disk. Uh, so it is a disk, and for each differential mass located on this disk, uh, it has its own distance r. Bit, uh, to the geometric center, then the differential moment of inertia generated by each differential mass is given by r squared times dm. 
Then in case I want to find the moment of inertia of the whole piece, the whole piece of stuff, then you just do the integration. Then the moment of inertia will become so you know that the i equals to r squared dm, then the, the the moment of inertia will just be integral of r squared dm. So so it is the definition of moment of inertia. However, you you might haven't heard about uh, that in this world there are two kinds of moment of inertia. One is the first moment of inertia, and another one is the second moment of inertia. So, so, uh, so for what we've learned from the general physics, it is called the second moment of inertia. So what what are the uh, difference between the first and second moment of inertia? So as you can see, this is the first moment of inertia. This is the second moment of inertia. Mm, their formula are almost identical except the indice of the d terms. So it is d to the power 1, it is d to the power 2. Uh, at this moment, you can see that, okay, uh, first moment of inertia is uh, uh, something times d, and the second moment of inertia is something times d to the power 2. This is why we call it second or first. Next, how about area moment of inertia because in physics in physics in physics course we have learned about the mass moment of inertia that means you times the mass with the distance square right but but in this course we don't care about the mass moment of inertia instead we will focus on the area moment of inertia that is we don't multiply the mass with the r square or the distance square, okay? I call it distance. So I don't I don't call it I don't multiply the mass with the distance to the power two. Instead I times the area. For example, you have a large area and you have a geometric center. Then then you have a differential area. So all the things will, are the same except the dm. So originally it is dm, right? So we just change it to da. And this definition of moment of inertia is also work. So next, let me intro. Uh, let me give you some simple comparison. So on the left hand side, you can see it is a table of mass moment of inertia. So it is talking about, okay, in case, uh, for example, the solid cylinder, it is rotating about an axis. So what will be the moment of inertia about this axis? Then the moment of inertia is given by this formula, i equals to one half of mR squared. So you can see that it is multiplied by mass instead of area. However, in for area moment of inertia, you can see that the you can see that the the moment of inertia is highly dependent on the geometry of a shape. For example, for this for this rectangular shape about an axis an an axis here then the moment of inertia is dependent on both its width, b, and height, d, uh, height, h. So uh, first, let's introduce first moment of inertia. So uh, there are two definitions of first moment of inertia. One is for x-axis and another one is for y-axis. Consider an arbitrary region with center of geometry located here, and then we draw the x-axis and the y-axis 
on the shape. So what is the first moment of inertia about the x-axis? So about the x-axis, it is given by the summation. So bear in mind that integral is a kind of summation. It is the summation of the altitude of differential area element. So ima imagine we have a differential area element located at position y. Then the first moment of inertia generated by this differential area is given by y dA. And we are interested to the first moment of inertia of the whole piece of area. Therefore, we will do the integration or the summation. So we integrate all those things over the entire area. This is why you can have this notation. Similarly, for arbitrary shape, Geometry center, you have x-axis and the y-axis. For the differential area, dA, it is located at position x. So let's see, this is x, okay? Then the differential first moment of inertia, dQ, is given by x dA. And consequently, in order to sub, uh, uh, summar summarize or integrate the entire area, we just take the double integral of it, x dA. This is why we can have such definition. So the first moment of inertia is very useful for evaluating the centroid of a piece of uh, cross-sectional area. But I will not introduce it in this very first video because such concepts, such methods will be introduced in the uh, later chapters. Now let's consider an area which is initially located here. And we try to transform it vertically upward and horizontally rightward. As you can see, when this area is transformed horizontally rightward, the first moment of inertia are all the same. They are zero. Notice that it is zero because this shape is symmetrical about the x-axis. The axis of symmetry is coincident with the x-axis. Now, if we transform this area upward, <coughs> then we can see the first moment of inertia increases. Let's try to understand the value of the first moment of inertia by mathematical manner. As you can see, Qx equals the integral of the entire area of the entire area y dA. So in this case, the average value of y of all differential area elements is y equals to 1. Therefore, you know that the average is 1, then the total of y times the differential area sum or integrated over the entire entire region is given by average of y times the entire area which equals to 16. Similarly, for this case, you can see that the average of y of all differential area elements is 2. Therefore, the first moment of inertia is given by the average of y times the entire area, which is 32. For, for this, for those cases which the area is symmetrical about the x-axis, you can see that the average of y 
is zero. And we know that the average of y times the area will also be zero because the average of y is already zero. Therefore, we can see that no matter how we transform the shape from left to right, or similarly from right to left, those, the moment of inertia, the first moment of inertia will still be constant, which is zero. The reason is that no matter how we translate the shape, those shape is always symmetrical about the x-axis, as you can see here. Similarly, if we transform this shape, in this case, you know that the first moment of inertia is 16. If you transform it leftward by some units, maybe three units, then the first moment of inertia will still be identical, which is 16, because the axis of symmetry, which indicates the average of y, is not changed. It is always 1, no matter how it translates horizontally. Just now, we only consider the case of Qx equals to the integral of the entire area y dA. In such case, no matter how the shape is transformed horizontally, the moment of inertia will not be changed. If we explain the first moment of inertia in words, that means it is the sum of position times area. Position, what I mean position here is x or y. And area is the area is the area of the area element dA. And uh, what we just did is to sum sum up all those uh, x dA or y dA to be the element of the first moment of inertia. Notice that the first moment of inertia can be either positive or negative. So in case the area just now is translated downward, then the average of y will become a negative number and consequently the first moment of inertia will become average of y times the entire area which is less than zero so bear in mind that first moment of inertia can be positive or negative now let's do an example evaluate the first moment of inertia of this i-shaped cross-section about x-axis, that means qx, and y-axis, which is qy. qx, recall the formulas are the area integral of y dA for x-axis and the area integral of x dA for y-axis. In order to solve qx, in order to find it, we have to divide the complicated I-shaped area into simple geometries. The word simple means that it is uh, the shape can, the average of X or average of Y can be easily found. Very often it is easy to find, okay, you have a rectangle, then you have average of X and average of Y. Sorry. Uh, so this should be average of y, and this is average of x. So for such simple geometry, you can easily find, okay, where is the average of x, average of y, etc. Or you have a circle, then you have average of x, average of y. So those 
uh, so-called simple geometry that we concern. So I hope to divide this whole shape into the simple geometry. So as we can see here, I divided the shape into three pieces of simple geometry. One, two, and three. All of them, you can see, are rectangles. And thus, it is easy to find the average of x or average of y. Now let's compute the qx. So as we can see, it is easy to find that the it is it is easy to find find that uh, the qx is given by the area integral of y for the for each differential area, which equals to so we consider each of them one by one since we are doing the integral, and we know that integral is the summation. So for the simple geometry problem, we can also write the integral in the summation form. The summation of r equals to 1 to 3 because we have three pieces. y, a, r. So that, that means we have y1, a1 plus y2, a2 plus y3, a3. So in this step, we just try to expand the integral. We just try to expand the summation. And it is obvious to find that, okay, y1 is 3.5, while the region is 7. y2 is 0 0.5, while the area is 15. y3 is minus 3, while its area is 18. Then Qx is given by 24.5 plus 7.5 minus 54 equals to 32 minus 54 equals to minus 22. That's it. This is the average. This is uh, the first moment of inertia about the x-axis. Also, we can compute by similar by similar manner about the about uh, the first moment of inertia about the y-axis. So we know that for the entire eye-shaped uh, area. The entire region has an axis of symmetry which is located at x equals to minus 0 0.5. So for qy, we know that okay, this I-shaped region is symmetrical about x equals to 0 0.5. Therefore, qy equals to the summation of the entire area x dA. Well, we know that uh, what is the area of the entire region? So it is 7 plus 15 plus 18, which is 40. Therefore, since, since this axis is the axis of symmetry, that means the average of x of all differential area elements over the entire region is minus 0 0.5. Therefore, the integral can be written as the average of x times the total area, which is equal to minus 20. Notice that this technique is only useful, only valid for, for symmetrical uh, cross-section like this I-shaped uh, area. However, in case you have to deal with an area which is uh, not 
non-symmetrical everywhere. So how can you do this? So let's suppose this I-shaped area is not symmetric. It is non-symmetrical everywhere. So how can we divide it into simple geometry? So in this case, we know that, okay, um, we know, we know, we know that, okay, we suppose the I shaped, the I shape, okay, is not symmetrical about any axis. So we try to divide the regions into those five. Then we can compute the QY uh, by another method. So, you know, you, you, as you can see, we tried to divide the entire area into five pieces. And uh, by dividing this entire area into five pieces, we can compute the QY by another mean. QY equals to, of course, the summation from all equals to one to five. XAR equals to x1 x a1 plus x2 a2 plus blah 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 plus x5 a5 <coughs> it equals to minus 3 times 2 minus 0 0.5 times 24 plus 2 times 2 minus 3.5 times 6 plus 2.5 times 6 equals to minus 6 minus 12 plus 4 um, minus 6 equals to minus 20. So this result agrees with our previous result you can, as you can see. Another method which is a little bit tricky is to eliminate the area that is symmetrical about axis concerned. So as we all know, uh, just now we raised an example. It is about uh, four times four air, four times four region, which is symmetrical about the x-axis. You can see that the qx for this region is zero because it is symmetrical about the axis we concern. In this case, in that case. The axis we concern is about the x axis. That means the region above the x axis and the region below the x axis are symmetrical, and the first moment of inertia generated by them is zero. Therefore, when we are solving similar problems, we can also try to eliminate the area in order to simplify our calculations. For example, for this I-shift uh, cross-section, you can see that when we are finding the first moment of inertia about the x-axis, this is the axis we concern. So what region is, what region is symmetrical about this axis? Well, it is significant that we can eliminate this 3 times 4 region and uh, another 3 times 4 region below. Some of you may ask me, okay, uh, if you want to eliminate the symmetrical region about the axis concerned, so how about eliminating those two above and uh, those two regions below. Well, basically you are correct, you can do that, but I don't recommend you to do this because it will make our calculation even more complicated because uh, after we deleting, eliminating those regions, then how can we calculate the average of y of those two L-shaped region, I know you can calculate it, but it, it is uh, rather complicated, so it is not recommended by me. 
instead let's try to not delete those regions and do and now we can know that okay we have four blocks remaining here with the average of y is 3.5 also we have 12 blocks located here with the average of y equals to minus 3 then the first moment of inertia can be written as a summation of r equals to 1 to 2 y y a equals to so consider the upper four blocks it is 3.5 times 4 then we consider the 12 blocks below minus 3 times 12 equals to 14 minus 36 equals to minus 22 which agrees with our conclusion just now so in the previous slide i've already shown you that the qx is minus 22 and uh, when finding qy of course there is another way to eliminate the area so we can eliminate this t-shaped area you can see this t-shaped area is symmetrical about it, about the y-axis and uh, we know that the first moment of inertia generated by the shape uh, by whatever shape that is symmetrical about the axis concern will be zero so after we eliminating the t-shaped area which is symmetrical about the y-axis we can find the first moment of inertia about the y-axis qy equals to minus 3.5 times 7 7 y7 consider those seven blocks with the common average value of x minus 3.5 also you have minus 1.5 times 7 still those seven blocks have the average of x equals to minus 1.5 then you consider the remaining six blocks located at the right hand side of the y-axis so it is 2.5 times 6 the result is minus 35 plus 15, which is minus 20. It agrees with our previous results. After talking about the first moment of inertia, let's move to the second moment of inertia. The second moment of inertia is defined in several ways. For the second moment of inertia about the x-axis, It is given by the integral, that means the summation of y square, y square. So instead of y, we take y squared this time because it is the second moment of inertia. And for each differential area element, you time, time it with y squared and they sum them up what does that mean as we all know area is greater than zero while the y square is greater than zero and this the integral sign is just means the summation that means the summation of of uh, something greater than zero or to be more rigorous, we know that y squared sometimes can be non -zero, uh, can, can be zero. Sometimes, okay. Then we can know that okay, it is the summation of something which is non-negative. So we know that this is non-negative. Then the summation of non-negative stuff will also be non-negative so this is the moment of inertia for uh, about the x-axis similarly this is the moment of inertia about the y-axis 
The definition is quite similar to the first moment of inertia, except there is a power 2. And uh, by similar reasons, Ixx is greater or equal to 0, and uh, the same to Iyy. However, for Ixy, xy can be negative for example you have an area element located in this quadrant x is less than zero y is greater than zero then the second moment of inertia generated by this differential area element di xy will be less than zero because the i x y equals to x y x y d a so i x y so what is x y x y i x y is uh, not relevant to x axis or y axis it is about origin the moment of inertia of the area about the origin how uh, how symmetrical this area is about the origin so it is uh, such a measure and uh, there is an important result that you have to know is that for example we have x-axis and the y-axis for this shape suppose it is symmetrical about the y-axis only then ixy will be zero because it is symmetrical about the y-axis also for a shape let's modify this a little bit for a shape which is symmetrical about the x-axis then ixy is also zero just concludes that for for a shape which is symmetrical about either y-axis or x-axis the ixy will be zero of course it, uh, it, it would be rather better in case the shape is symmetrical about both x-axis and y-axis then ixy will indeed be zero as well Next, I'm going to introduce you the exact mathematical operation on how the, how the double integration can be in implemented. So just now we introduced a lot of concepts. For example, the first moment of inertia is the integral of y over the entire region if we are talking about x-axis, etc. So there are a lot of formula, but how can we actually implement the double integration method to solve the um, area moment of inertia? So let's try to deal with this example first. So this is an example, okay? It is not, it is not something that you have to remember, but the example will uh, in this example, I will demonstrate to you how to solve the, how to find the moment of inertia by using the double integral. So uh, it is relevant to your one of your previous course, which is Math 2011 multivariable multivariable calculus, and uh, and uh, I wish to use this example to let you uh, do some basic review on it. 
So, what is the area of this rectangle? Well, area of the rectangle equals to the integral of all the area elements of all the area. It sounds that I am saying something like rubbish. Yes, the area is the integral, is the summation of all area elements. But this is how we use the double integral to evaluate the area. We know that for x-axis, the, the bound is from minus 1 to 5, while for the y-axis, the bound is from minus 1 to 4. Therefore, the area of the rectangle equals to the integral from 0, uh, sorry, from minus 1 to 4, integral from minus 1 to 5. And the nothing inside means 1, okay? So we often ignore it. For minus 1 to 5, it is talking about the x. And for minus 1 to 4, it is talking about the y. The result will become 30, which is significant. Because, uh, so in case you don't understand why it is 30, so minus 1 to 4, minus 1 to 5, dx, dy. First, we integral with respect to dx. Then it will become minus 1 to 4. x is integrated from minus 1 to 5. And then dy. Then you know this piece of stuff will equal to 6. Then it becomes 6 times minus 1 to 4, dy. It equals to 6 times y from minus 1 to 4, which is 6 times y equals to 30. Next, let's try to find the first moment of inertia about x axis, that is, qx equals to the double integral of the entire area y dA equals to minus 1 to 4, minus 1 to 5, y dx dy. How to do this double integral? Minus 1 to 4, minus 1 to 5, y dx dy. First, for the inner integral, you can see that it is, uh, so y is irrelevant to x. So you just treat y to be the constant, minus 1 to 4, take out y, and you do the integral, minus 1 to 5 dx. And as what we just said just now, this thing is just equals to 6. And you have the dy behind. Then it will become 6 times minus 1 to 4 y dy. And you know, after you integrate y dy, you will obtain 6 divided by 2, because y is going to be y squared, and you will have a denominator developed. So it is y squared. Then the inner, then the upper and lower, in, lower limits are still minus 1 to 4 it equals to 3 times 16 minus 1 equals to 45. Therefore, we know that the first moment of inertia about x-axis is 45 for this, for this rectangular region. Next, talking about the first moment of inertia about y-axis, qy equals to the double integral of the entire region x dA equals to integral from minus 1 to 4 integral from minus 1 to 5 x dx dy. Well, uh, how to do this integral? First, minus 1 to 4 minus 1 to 5 x dx dy you can see that the inner integral is relevant to x, so therefore we will integrate it 
and uh, consequently there will be um, one half generated from the integration and for the x square you have 5 minus 1 and you know this is uh, just the number which is 25 minus 1 equals to 24 so this is 24 dy and then you just take out the number it is 12 times minus 1 to 4 dy and uh, significantly it, it equals to 5 therefore it is 12 times 5 equals to 60 therefore the first moment of inertia about the y-axis is, is 60. Let's accelerate a little bit because all the things we are going to we are doing currently is just to do the second uh, is just to do the double integral again and again for i x x equals to the double integral of the entire area y squared dA equals to minus 1 to 4 minus 1 to 5 y squared dx dy so we copy it here minus 1 to 4 minus 1 to 5 y squared dx dy equals to 6 times minus 1 to 4 y squared dy equals to 2 times y cubed for minus 1 equals to 2 times 64 plus 1 equals to 130 IYY equals to the double integral of the entire area x squared dA equals to minus 1 to 4 minus 1 to 5 x squared dx dy minus 1 to 4 minus 1 to 5 x squared dx dy equals to 5 times uh, 5 divided by 3 x cubed from 5 from minus 1 to 5 equals to 5 over 3 126 equals to uh, 210 so bear in mind that I have already accelerated my calculation here so try to follow it try to integrate yourself and uh, finally I x y equals to the double integral of the entire region x y d a equals to minus one to four minus one to five x y d x d y. So in this case, bear in mind that um, it is a little bit complicated because uh, x y is sticked together. There are two variables. Therefore. Now let's do this. Minus 1 to 4, minus 1 to 5, x, y, dx, dy. So since the inner integral is integrating with respect to x, then y is the constant. Take the y out. And uh, for the inner integral, it becomes minus 1 to 5, x, dx. Then you have dy outside. You know that the value will become minus 1 to 4. So you know that since this piece of stuff, after you evaluating it, will become a constant. Therefore, you just take it out. The entire integral will become something like minus 1 to 5 x dx times minus 1 to 4 y dy k then it will become 1 half x square from minus 1 to 5 times 1 half y square from minus 1 to 4 equals to 1 fourth 
25 minus 1 and the 16 minus 1 equals to 6 times 15 equals to 90. So the second moment of inertia IXY about the origin is 90. Well, let's discuss a little bit more. So for this second moment of inertia, why it is non-zero? It is because it is neither symmetrical about the y-axis, it is not, right? Y is not the axis of symmetrical. It is neither symmetrical about the y-axis, nor symmetrical about the x-axis. Therefore, it will be non-zero. Well, in the multivariable calculus, one of the most common transformation of variable we we saw be, we saw before will be the uh, transformation from the Cartesian coordinate system to the polar coordinate system. So, in case we're going to evaluate this circular shaped shape for the first moment of inertia, second moment of inertia, and edge areas, how can we do it? Well, it can be done by using the change of variable technique. So for this example, let's take this circle as an example. The equation is x squared plus y minus 1 squared equals to 8. That means its center is located here. The coordinate is 0, 1. And its radius is square root 8. Now, how can we transform the Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates? Well, let's take the coordinates from its center. So it will become the r-axis and it will be theta. Then, what is x? Well, it is significant that x will become r cosine theta. How about y? y is starting from 1, you see? This, this, uh, the center of this circle is located at 0, 1. So how to deal with this 1? Well, it is, it is okay to do this because we know that y minus 1, that is, if you have an arbitrary y located here, then this distance will become y minus 1, right? So we take y minus 1 equals to r sine theta. Instead of taking y equals to r the sine theta, because of the center is located at y equals to 1. Then, from the multivariable calculus, we have learned about the Jacobian matrix, which is given by partial x, y, partial r, theta, equals to the determinant of partial x, partial r, partial x, partial theta, partial y, partial r, partial y, partial theta. It equals to, so what is partial x, partial r? It is just differentiate with respect to r, which is cosine theta. Well, if you differentiate x with respect to theta, you will see that it will become minus r sine theta. What is partial y, partial r? It will become sine theta. 
And similarly, partial r, partial theta will become r cosine theta. Consequently, by evaluating this Jacobian matrix, we can see that it equals to r because it is r cosine square theta while well, this is r sine square theta and we, and we know that cosine square theta plus sine square theta equals to 1 therefore this Jacobian matrix indicates that since we know that dA equals to dx dy then by using this Jacobian matrix, it can also be written to be r dr d theta. Therefore, for any double integral like this, in the Cartesian coordinate, it has originally dx dy, and the, the function, the integrand, the function inside called integrand, has the variable x and y, which is not transformed. In order to transform it, we just simply replace dx dy by using r dr d theta. And we will rewrite fxy to be f of r theta by using the transformation of the variable, which is uh, stated here. Now let's uh, begin with this example. The circle located at 0, 1 with radius to square root 2, which is square root of 8. So the area of the region is still the double integral of the area of all differential area elements equals to, so we know that the A equals to R dr d theta. And uh, the range of theta is of course from 0 to 2 pi because it has been surrounded for uh, one cycle. So it is from 0 to 2 pi for theta and from 0 to square root 8 the a but we know that the a is r dr d theta so the area is just this double integral so let's evaluate it so 0 to 2 pi 0 to square root 8 r dr d theta equals to so you know that this piece of integral, definite integral, will be a constant. Therefore, it is 0 to square root 8 r dr times an integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta. The result will be 1 half of r square from 0 to square root 8 times 2 pi. The result will be 8 pi. At the same time, by intuitive manner, we know the radius is square root 8. Therefore, a equals 2 pi r square equals 2 pi times square root a square equals to 8 pi. So you know that the area here agrees with our operation when we are doing the double integral with the change of variable. Next, let's uh, try to evaluate one more. Uh, for the rest of them, I'm going to leave you as an exercise. So how can we evaluate the first moment of inertia about x-axis? So let's do this. <coughs> so, qx equals to the area integral of y for all differential area elements equals to, so still the same 
the same thing we copy it the upper and lower limits but now you have y times r d r d theta so problem is what is y since we have already said y equals to r sine theta plus one because because uh, this is what we set how we transform the variable then the whole integral will become r times r sine theta plus one the r d theta <coughs> let's do this it is 0 to 2 pi 0 to square root 8 r square sine theta plus r dr d theta it equals to from 0 to 2 pi one third of r cubed times sine theta plus one half of r square from 0 to square root 8 from 0 to square root 8 then d theta <coughs> let's check it again so you integral you integrate this integrand with respect to r then sine is the constant you take it out r square becomes to r cube then you have one third here and for r here r becomes r squared and you will have one half located here for the remaining you just uh, integrate the whole piece of stuff with respect to d theta so this will become um, seems very complicated right uh, 0 to 2 pi um, r to the power 3 that means 8 8 okay 8 square root 8 over 3 sine theta plus r square is 8 plus 4 d theta but there is a significant thing that you can take it to be zero that is sine theta the reason is that you know that if you take this constant out and you integrate sine theta with respect to theta then it will become minus cosine theta a square root 8 3 minus cosine theta from 2 pi to 0 but you know that since it's since the upper and lower limits are from 2 pi are from 0 to 2 pi that means the the value when plug it plug it in the upper and lower limits are the same that means this piece of stuff will automatically be zero <coughs> therefore what left in the integral will become integral of 0 to 2 pi for d theta the result will be 8 pi this is the first moment of inertia of this um, this cross section of course uh, it is it is also can be verified by another mean <coughs> since we know that okay uh, just now I introduced for rectangle or circle you can easily find the average of y or average of x right so by using the average of x concept average of y concept you know that okay for this circle for every differential area element on this region the average value of y is 1 But you know that from previous from previous calculation we know that it equals to two eight pi right 
at equals to 8 pi. Then the first first moment of inertia will become 1 times 8 pi equals to 8 pi, which agrees to our result. So the first moment of inertia about x axis is 8 pi. <coughs> So the rest of the four problems, I mean the first moment of inertia about the y-axis, the second moment of inertia about x-axis, y-axis, and uh, ixy, are left to you as the exercise. <coughs> but I want you to verify or intuitively tell me two of them. So for the rest of the four, uh, the four sectional properties, there are two of them that can be intuitively told. That is, first moment of inertia about y-axis and the ixy. As what we mentioned just now, so about the y-axis, so this is the axis we concern. And we know that the entire region, the circle, right, is symmetrical about the y-axis. So what will be the result of the first moment of inertia if it is symmetrical about the axis concerned? Yes, the result will become zero. Also, similarly, for the second moment of inertia, ixy, in case there exists an axis of symmetry, lying on either x-axis or y-axis, the second moment of inertia will also be zero. So those two, result can, those two results can be intuitively told. <coughs> so for the, rest of four, for the rest of them, I invite you to do some exercise. Still, by using the change of variable technique, you I, I believe you can do it. So similarly, it is qy equals to double integral of the entire area, but x dA. So what is x? I believe you know it. You just substitute inside and do the similar integration steps, then you will get the answer. Also, ixx equals to the integral of the entire area of y squared dA. So what is y squared? So you know what is y, then you just plug it in to transform the integral to be uh, the function of r and theta with respect to dr and d theta, right? So similarly for iyy, it is the double integral of the entire area x squared dA and the ixy equals to the double integral of the entire area xy dA and you use change of variables to get the next step. There is an exercise that I invite you to do. Derive the second moment of inertia of those two very common shapes that would occur in the engineering applications about an axis passing through its centroid. So of course, obviously, the centroid of the rectangle is located here. Similarly, for this one, for the circle, the centroid is here. For this axis passing through its centroid, what is the second moment of inertia of them? Well, to do this, it is easy. So for about this axis, well, it is horizontal, so I just treat something as y. So i equals to the double integral of the entire area, y dA. Oh, sorry, it should be y squared because it is the second moment of inertia. Okay, so don't, don't mix them up. Then, for this moment of inertia, 
how to evaluate. So we know that since it is talking about the vertical direction, about the vertical direction, cheat treat y equals to zero for this axis, then the upper limit will become y equals to w over 2, lower limit is minus w over 2. So the integral will become for, for x from for x with length l and uh, with with the upper and lower into upper and lower limit to be w over 2 and a minus w over 2 of y square dy dx <coughs> so it's significant it is significant that it should be so you know that for the for the inner integral after you evaluate it will become the constant so the integral will become the integral of dx over the length l, which is significantly to be l, times, or oh, I don't write it like this, times the integral from w over 2, from minus w over 2 to w over 2, okay, y squared dy. The result will become um, will become w cube l over 12 notice that it is a very common result that you have to know because uh, after you dealing with this uh, uh, dealing with such a common shape you know, okay, for this common shape, there is a formula describing a second moment of inertia, right? So you don't need to use the double integral technique again and again to find the uh, moment of inertia. Instead, you use the equation directly. Next, let's try to evaluate the moment of inertia of a circular shape. <coughs> so we know that the moment of inertia equals to the double integral of the entire area of y square for every differential area element. It equals to so we know that the lower in the lower limit for the theta would be zero and upper would be two pi. And uh, for r significantly it is from zero to r. But what is y? We know that y equals to r sine theta. Then you can write r square sine square theta because it is y square, okay? And dA equals to r dr d theta. The integral would become 0 to 2 pi 0 to r r cube sine square theta dr d theta. It would become r to the power 4 divided by 4, 0 to 2 pi sine squared theta d theta. <coughs> and we know that sine squared theta equals to 1 minus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. Therefore, it will become so we take out the divide by 2 first then the outside will become r to the power 4 divided by 8 the inner world will become 1 minus cosine 2 theta d theta but we know that even though i integrate this up it will be zero because the lower and limits are zero and two pi which means that the the integral of cosine 2 theta with this lower and upper limits will be zero. Therefore, this piece becomes zero, and consequently, we conclude that it is equal to r to the power 4 divided by 8 times 2 pi equals to pi r to the power 4 divided by 4. <coughs> 
it is similar similar to the rectangle example it is also um, an important result that worth you to remember or sometimes it can be provided by the formula sheet of the course but I'm not sure whether it will be provided though so but uh, for this video I have to emphasize that we are we are just going to illustrate you how to apply the mathematics state, mathematics skills to our physics applications. So I don't think for this course the math will become too difficult to do. <coughs> so let's move on to the last topo last topic of our first very first video which is the parallel axis theorem. So parallel axis theorem is very common when we are going to find the second moment of inertia of the area. <coughs> so for the theorem, uh, for those theorem, it is a little bit difficult to explain in words, but uh, let's uh, illustrate you by using some examples. So uh, before we introduce the example, uh, let's talk a little bit. So I x x naught, what is what does that mean? Just now we evaluated what is the moment of inertia of this rectangle. This axis is passing through its centroid, right? The moment of inertia of an area about an axis passing through its centroid will be ixx naught. This is just a notation. I like to use this notation, but you may want to change it. That's okay. Uh, in fact, for different textbooks, there are different notations. So. Just check it out and see which one do you like. So maybe I ver verbally we call it the moment of inertia of itself. Verbally, okay, it is not that formal. I just try to let you understand. So it is the moment of inertia about itself, an axis, an axis passing through its centroid. The moment of inertia of uh, about an axis passing through its centroid. Okay. And uh, now we are interested. We are interested to. So for example, I named this axis to be x zero. Okay. Now we are interested to the moment of inertia of this region about another axis that is parallel to this axis parallel this axis is parallel to the axis that passing through the centroid of this shape and we are interested to the moment of inertia of this region about this axis we call it x-axis well maybe I call it A and B some of you might wonder okay I've already learned about double integral method so I can do the double integral again to find the moment of inertia of this region about the x-axis you may want to write, okay, it is uh, ixx equals to, uh, so I call it L, okay, integral of the length L and the integral from A to B, y squared dy dx. You may want to write integral in this way, right? Because we have, we have already learned the double integral method, but no, I'm not going to use this method. What I wish to introduce is that we can actually introduce the parallel axis theorem 
to get rid of using the double integral. What does that mean? I believe it has it has already taught in your um, year one physics course when talking about the math moment of inertia. But for the area mom for the area moment of inertia, it is rather similar. You will have your entire area times the vertical distance delta y squared. Okay, so what does that mean? That means the moment of inertia about this axis equals to the moment of inertia of itself plus the area times their the, the square of their vertical distance. This is talking about the moment of inertia about the about the horizontal axis. And similarly, if we are talking about, okay, so it is an axis y0, and we're interested to the moment of inertia of this region about y axis, then you will have a horizontal translation delta x the distance between the two axes right then the moment of inertia will become the moment of inertia of itself moment of inertia of it about the about the vertical axis which passes through its centroid plus its entire area times the horizontal translation delta x then you will get the moment of inertia of this region about the y-axis as you can see it is uh, exactly what I wish to say say so <coughs> For this example, we take x is going from minus 1 to 5, and the y is from 1 to 4. Let's try to use uh, both parallel axis theorem and the double integration method to solve this. By double integration method, ixx equals to the double integral of the entire area y squared dA equals to so x is from minus 1 to 5 y is from y is from 1 to 4 and uh, it will become y squared dy dx it equals to 6 times um, one third of 4 cube minus 1 cube equals to 126. <coughs> How about by using the parallel axis theorem? So first, for this rectangular shape, ixx not equals to um, it should be 6 times 3 cube over 12 equals to 13.5 so where is this from it is from our previous slide about the moment of inertia w cube l over 12 some formula like that then ixx equals to ixx naught plus a delta y square so delta y equals to 2.5 as shown in the previous slide equals to 13.5 plus area is 18 and the delta y is 2.5 squared then the result will be 126 
So as you can see from here, you can get rid of using the double integration instead. By using the parallel axis theorem, you can also find the moment of inertia easily. Similarly, IYY, that means the moment of inertia about this axis equals to the moment of inertia of itself plus the entire region times the distance squared. So here we know that A equals to 18, delta X equals to 2. So what is IYY0? IYY0 equals to, as you can see, we are integrating along this direction, X direction, right? So it would become um, 6 cubed times 3 divided by 12 equals to um, let me see and this should be 54 right so so let's do it again by two methods i y y equals to the integral x squared dA equals to minus 1 to 5 minus oh sorry uh, 1 to 4 x squared dy dx the result will be 126 as well but by parallel axis theorem i y y not equals to 54 as what we evaluated in the last slide and i y y equals to 54 plus 12 times 2 squared so this is the area this is the delta x and this is i y y not and the result is 126 so those results are agree with each other Now let's uh, talk about IXY, which is a little bit different from Peary's uh, IXX and IYY. So, previously, both of them have an axis of concern, which is X axis for IXX and the Y axis for IYY. However, this time we don't consider about the axis. Instead, we consider the geometric center and the origin. The IXY of a shape is defined as the IXY of itself plus A times delta X times delta Y, where delta X is the uh, displacement. Say, for example, if you go from 0 to 2, then delta X is 2. And you go from here to there, then delta y is 2.5. But one thing you have to bear in mind uh, for all the notations we have mentioned before is that in case you have a geometric center located here, for example, then now delta x will be minus 1 and uh, delta y will be 3. So notice that delta x and delta y are symbol sensitive. Okay, so, so delta x can be positive or negative and uh, the same for delta y. So let's try to do it by using double integration method. So it is uh, for x, it is from minus 1 to 5, y for y, it's from 1 to 4. And it is xy and dy dx. It equals to uh, 0 minus 1 to 5. Take the x out and uh, then you have the things inside will be the constant. Then you can write the integral in this way. After evaluating this integral, you will have uh, 12 
times mm, 16 16 15 over 2 equals to 90 you might um, feel confused or don't believe about this but that's fine let's verify it by using the parallel axis theorem so i x y now since it is symmetrical so it is zero and the i x y about the origin is given by i x y zero plus a delta x delta y which equals to zero plus so the area is 18 Delta x is 2, delta y is 2.5. It is 90, so you can see those two answers are verified. <coughs> Again, our last reminder is that delta x and the delta y say for this point, the delta x we, we are saying here can be negative. Okay. So for example, the coordinate is minus 3, 4. Then in this case, delta x is minus 3, delta y is 4. In case the geometric center is located here. Okay. Okay, to summarize, to summarize, um, one, one thing we have discussed is the first and second moment of inertia. Still remember it, their definitions? Qx equals to the double integral of the entire region of y for every differential area element. Qy equals to similarly, all the things are the same except you are going to replace the y by x. Moment of inertia about the x-axis is given by the integral of the entire area y squared dA. Moment of inertia about the y-axis is given by the double integral of the entire area x squared for every differential area element. Ixy equals to all the things are the same except you re replace the y squared or x squared by using the xy. And the one reminder is that i x y equals to zero if the shape is symmetrical about either x or y axis. <coughs> We also learned about parallel axis theorem, which states that i x x equals to i x x naught plus a y square a delta y square i y y equals to i y y zero plus a delta x square and i x y similarly equals to i x y naught plus a delta x times delta y. And the final reminder is that delta x, delta y can be negative in case the coordinate of the geometric center or the axis or the axis of the um, the area itself is located below the axis we concern or on the left hand side of the axis we concern. So finally, thanks for watching this video about the introduction of the solid mechanics course. If you have any comments, please uh, leave it below and I will read it. And uh, in case it is, it is, the time is permitted or it is okay, I will try to reply you under it. So thanks for watching.